Something a little bit different this morning. We've um, come up to uh, Midlands Canal. Uh, never been here before, never seen the place. Um, just want to hopefully get ourselves a few perch, maybe a few pike, run for a few tactics and a few um, sort of areas that I kind of look for if I'm going to a venue that I haven't fished before. Um, this is just, uh, we've just walked away from where we've parked, a little bit of a turning bay, somewhere to start. Um, started on a little bright um, slick stick, just as, don't know what the clarity is normally like here, but at the moment you've probably got, I don't know, maybe a foot, foot of clarity. So somewhat just a little bit bright. And uh, as you can see, little perch to start. So fingers crossed we'll get somewhat a bit bigger. Um, but yeah, stick with us. We'll go through a few bits and bobs. Hopefully, like I say, catch some perch. Then we'll put this gear away in the van, get some proper gear out and uh, see if we can find a pike or two. So I brought a couple of rods out with me first thing this morning. Um, a two to 10, which I set up with a little drop shot and a um, three to 14. Both of these are the TI Pros. Just two light little rods really. Starting on the crankbait or the twitch bait just to try and cover a bit of water. See if we can get a pull or two. Um, just feel my way really. I always like to start on something a bit faster and a bit more aggressive. Just twitching this one through through the water. A few pauses and that, that little perch that we just had was just on the pause. Um, and then if I can find a couple, maybe go over the drop shot. Maybe switch over to a open jig and just um, just have a play about really. I don't do loads and loads of this canal fishing. It's nice to get somewhere new and um, just see if we can find a few fish. Oh, he's off. There's a couple of little pools there, just down the middle track. Small fish again, but at least it's another little pull, another little indication, but um, yeah, just mentioned in the middle track. You come to these canals and they kind of all look the same, I suppose. You know, they're long, narrow, quite dirty, but um, there's actually loads and loads and loads of features to go at. You've obviously got all the features you can see visually above, above water, so just Behind us there, we've got a bridge, which will obviously um, provide some shade, some cover. Generally speaking, there's been shopping trolleys and all kinds of debris chucked overboard, so there's gonna be snags and somewhere for the fish to hide. Um, the bridges will also generally have a straight wall inside structure on both banks, um, which again, can't really be ignored. You can fish right up tight, but quite often it just give give you an extra little bit of depth just under the bridges quite a, quite a bit. Um, then behind myself we've got like a junction where there's the two parts of the canal are meeting so um, if there's any flow on the canal at all that will kind of create an area where food will get trapped where the two different currents or the two different um, stream bodies meet each other so there could be a little crease line there or there could just be um, a slightly deeper area or likewise slightly shallower if there's lots of um, lots of debris like I'm finding today that's been um, been washed up then that area could be a bit more silty and hold more bait fish more bream more roach and then the pike and perch are going to follow in um, but there's also the underwater sort of features if you like where these last couple of wraps that I've just just missed actually seem to be down this insert, down this middle track where you've got sort of the marginal shelf on both sides and it's just that little bit deeper and I think maybe because we've had quite a lot of um, rain and really stormy horrible weather recently they might have just dropped into that slightly deeper section in the middle of the canal and it doesn't have to be a lot deeper sometimes it can only be a couple of inches difference but that that difference does provide somewhere for them to hide or somewhere where the water temperature might be slightly different. Um, ugh, there's another one. I think these are very small fish actually. So I might, um, I might put a little drop shot just down here. Just in this middle track, I've just missed three or four little pools um, and I can just see a bit of current flow in there as well. So whether that's encouraging them to be in there, I'm not sure, but there's definitely something that's holding a couple of fish down there. So 
I'll give this a couple of little goes and then um, hopefully we'll mooch on up or down. I don't know which way is which and see if we can find a couple more features to show you. We've got um, obviously lock gates, which we haven't come across any yet, but there's another great fish holding area that we'll be able to have a look at. And um, hopefully I'll actually land one of these little tiddlers that I'm hooking or not hooking. I thought that was off then. This could be a pike or a foulet bream or a foulet bream in the dorsal. <laughs> I knew I was bumping into summer. <laughs> hey. The gold on the yeah, do. <laughs> So unfortunately that one wasn't a perch or a pike. That was a uh, foul hooked skimmer. So whether or not those little bites I've been missing was actually um, me bumping across fish, I'm not sure, but it's a good sign that hopefully when we um, get a few perch on board and we can go and pick the pike rods up, might be an area to try for the pike fish in. If there's eight, 10 ounce skimmers here, then they're certainly good bait, good food source for the pike. So um, not, uh, not the intended species, but um, encouraging to know where fish are. And that all helps in the pattern of working out where you should be fishing. Well, I wasn't really expecting that. Lovely little chub there. So you can probably hear it in the background. We've just left from where that little turning bay is and the bridge there. And um, I'll just pop that little one back. And I come across this little bit of an inlet there. Um, to be honest, it's likely to be run off from roads and drains and ditches and that sort of thing. So. At certain times of the year it can hold a lot of fish, other times of the year it's probably best to avoid it, i.e. if we've had some um, snow and there's a lot of salt being washed into the water, it's not likely to hold many fish. It's not an area that I was going to give many casts to, but I just had a little pull on the second chuck, that little chub uh, on the third chuck, but it's just, again, it's just another little feature. You've got all this long straight barrenness and then you've got moving water. So always worth a try, but do bear in mind the time of the year. So if it's the summer and there's moving water and oxygen coming in, it's highly likely to hold fish. If it's winter and um, it's clearer water, pushing some of the dirty water away, it's likely to hold fish. But if we've, um, if we've had snow or we've had serious amounts of rain and it's pulling all the oils and all the salt and stuff off the road, then it's likely to put fish off. But that doesn't mean that fish won't be within say 50 or 100 yards either side of it because they're still going to be in that same sort of area but just another feature to look out for and um, yeah I'm going to have three or four more chucks and we'll carry on at the canal. So as you can probably see, and maybe even here, we just um, wandered up a bit further, come across this little bridge, and as I think I said earlier, and you can see it's, um, it's narrowed right up here, so it's almost like a, um, a channel, and the, the flow is actually increased where the, where the um, canal is so much narrower. But I don't give these spots a long time, and it's not really my cup of tea, but it's always worth a little dabble up the inside, right along the wall, and uh, right under the bridge. So yeah, there's another feature to add to your armory. Oh, that's a slightly better one. So we just wandered up the canal and found another little feature, which is these reeds and um, a bit of marginal cover. I'm in the right pickle. <laughs> Way! That'll be a smooth transition between that and that. Yeah, good. <laughs> nice one.
There we go. That's, that's more like it. No, we're, we're cooking a bit now. Oh. Look at the colours of that. Look at that beauty. That's more like it. Beautiful, mate. And we got. Um, What's that? Spiky. Oh, yeah. A little spiky shed. Lovely, fin perfect canal perch. And as much as we've been catching those little tiddlers, that's a bit more fun. Nice. That's the sort of fish that you can find in these little canals. The colours on it are stunning actually. It's quite golden and brown and a lot less green in than the river fish that we're used to catching. Lovely job. We did just have that one cracking little perch, or big perch I suppose. Um, but the thing, or well, reason I stopped here is that it's the first time on the canal I've seen any reed structure, plus there's a slip, well I suppose you can call it, on the far side there. And I just wondered whether those perch are sitting tight underneath them reeds and um, and you know, that's, that's yet another little holding spot. So as you can probably see behind, there's no reeds or no nothing on the side of the canal. And it was just the first time, that's a snag. First time I saw it and um, yeah, we've had one almost straight away. So I think um, in true Kev style, what I'll do in a minute is chop and change my baits a bit because I've had a couple of little pulls, but I've got a feeling there's more fish here, but um, presentation or the bait's probably just not quite right at the moment so we'll chop and change for a few um, and then I think we'll probably end up making our way back towards the car I'll show you the um, baits and kit that I've used for the day and then we'll um, see if we can't try and bag a pike before it gets too dark I'll even get it. <laughs> Well, hey, so as I think I was just saying, we, um, I thought there was more fish there and that little spiky shad got us the first one. But a quick change to a creature bait and completely different colour, different presentation, second cast. We've had another lively little perch. This one might not play ball, he's a bit lively. There we go. So, um, as I was saying quite a few hours ago, when we weren't catching, it's well worth going through the different colours and through the different, um, different styles. So this has got a much slower fall than the paddle tail had. And uh, we got one straight away. I did shout, yeah. Uh. Well, Sam was having a Jimmy riddle, but um, that one wanted that. And yet again, just changed colour. It's a different spiky shed somewhere hidden away down there. And um, a fish first cast. There we go. There are lovely colours on these. And yeah, just um, constantly changing baits, constantly changing colour, and, um, and again, the presentation, and straight away. We're getting a few now. If this rain carries on and the perch fishing carries on, we might be coming back a different day for the pike fishing. We'll see. Happy days. Well, 
as you can see, the heavens have absolutely opened on us. Um, we managed to find some perch, and um, yeah, we had some good ones and a good bit of perch fishing in the end. So, just um, just a quick recap, really. Today, I've been out um, with two rods with me. Like I briefly said earlier, I've got the um, the two to ten, and this is in the um, Fox Rage Ti Pro. And then I've got the three to fourteen, which again is the Ti Pro. I mean, if um, I've used them both for two different applications today, the lighter one for the drop shot and the slightly heavier one for the jig. Um, you don't need to bring two rods out with you at all. Um, I just do it for speed of swapping methods really. But if you had to just bring one out, personally, I would go with the three to 14. It's just a little bit more versatile. Um, you know, you can do your jig fishing, drop shot. And if you do hook a pike, you've got every chance to land it on that. You will land it on the lighter rods, but this will give you a proper, a proper chance of doing so. Um, both of them have been paired up today with the, um, with the Prism X, just a thousand size reel, uh, just eight pound braid on both rods. And uh, yeah, I suppose the key to the day was just going through the baits. I mean, we've used spiky shads, the mini craw, the mini craw worked out very well in the end actually. Um, the slick stick, the slick shad, uh, we only had one on the slick stick, so I think they didn't really want a hard bait today. The softer baits worked better. We had a few bites on the drop shot, but didn't actually catch on the drop shot. Um, mostly just on an open jig. And yeah, it was a combination between the, the mini craw and, and one of my favorites, the spiky shad, that, um, that produced the most fish and the most bites. But we've been through and seen lots of features, lots of areas to fish. Like I said right at the start, I haven't been here before. Um, I've actually had a great day until I got soaked wet through. Um, but you know, we've, we've gone through a lot of the features. So hopefully, if you go and fish a canal or a river or anywhere for the first time, you can remember some of these features and go and try them all out for yourselves. Um, one thing you might have seen me carrying all day is my welded bag. So I was a bit prepared for this weather coming. And um, some people think it's a bit of a strange option to walk along the canal with, but it's actually really comfy when you've only got a couple of items in there. But the really good thing is, it's proper waterproof. So at the moment, my phone, my keys, and all my kit, I don't want to get wet. They're all inside the bag and everything stayed dry, unlike myself. So I think um, we're going to round it up today now, really. Call it a day on the, on the perch fishing. We are going to get back to the vans. I might pick up a pipe rod if, um, if it stops raining a bit. And uh, if we do and we catch a few, you might see us again. But if not, tight lines.